Welcome to Channel AMAC, your insight to the Australian visa system. Good day everyone, my name is Carl Young, your online YouTube migration consultant. Now, today's video, I would like to take you into a depth of the 188B, it's traditionally known as the government bond investment visa. Now, it's under the stream of the investor stream, whereby a uh, eligible applicant will be able to gain this visa for four years and three months. And then during the time they invested 1.5 million Australian dollars into a government agency bond and in, then four years after maturity you'll be able to transfer into a permanent residency now there's commonly questions uh, how do you gain the first initial qualified criteria to able be that applicant to lodge this visa now in today's video i'll take you to go into the depth and explain how each of these criteria actually meant okay now let's take you to the immigration website so as you can see here let me adjust the video uh okay here we go okay this is actually the immigration's website for investor stream as you can see on the title it's under the business innovation and investor provisional visa now uh and here it does repeat as what i have just said it provides you a four years and three months of the visa but currently the processing time it's not showing but with our experience it's at least uh, 12 18 months sometimes getting longer uh, it's just due to a lot of uh, constraint on the fund uh, convertible fund to be actually um, meeting the international requirements so it's actually getting the department of immigration or home affairs offers to actually taking more time to assess all the applications now as you can see right underneath right down here where the simplified requirement uh, and, and i take you to read through it and then i'll take you into the actual law and policy how each of these criteria actually meant so obviously the first thing is they they, they tell you that you need to invest 1.5 million to an australian or uh, state or territory but it's due to, it's generally a state or territories treasury bond or fund and you need to get that 65 point test which generally if you meet the following you should be able to get it because you you need to have business asset investment personal asset of at least 2.25 million dollars so that including all your residential uh, assets uh, properties uh, and the cash in the bank deposit bond stock business assets under the, whatever the uh, the uh, shareholding percentage that you have for your business so let's go into the eligibility which will give you actual more depth into here now obviously you need to be nominated by a state or territory now you need to show the thing that we want to talk about today is this part here okay so if you wanted to know more about the points how you can actually get that 65 point i did have provided a, a previous video and I will, i'll put it in the um, top right here with a, with a link you can click and go and go back and then have a check it out now today's video i would like to take in more depth about this now there's two way to actually prove uh, and to meet this criteria of only a managing business or personal asset investment so one is obviously right here uh says that have managed to qualify business or investments of value of at least australian dollar of 1.5 million dollars so what you need to do here you need to prove that within at least one of the five fiscal years immediately before you've been invited to apply so that means once you've been invited now the key point here is that you cannot take the year that during you have already lodged the visa and waiting for be, to be processed it has to be the year before you have applied or you have been invited okay that's the key here now you need to also prove that you are directly managing them either it's actually a qualified basis or eligible investments so there's choice of either one so either you have a qualifying business whereby you or your partner is actually managing the business and you or your partner or you and your partner together own a percentage of a share of at least 
ten percent of ten percent. So generally, if you if you're small or medium sized business owners, you easily prove with this. So it, it won't be too hard to prove this. Now, the the hard bit here is that the second part. Now, if you do not operate a small and medium sized businesses, you are possibly a senior. Uh, manager or uh, whatever the role that you're in possibly as a doctor or or, or, or other kind of uh, occupation or position working out there but you do have a long-term profile on investments you may be able to, uh, to to meet this requirement but you need to show that you have eligible investments of at least 1.5 million owned by you okay directly owned by you or your partner or you and your partner together combined now the key here is that directly managing it now here it does not mean that in that particular year you have injected a total of 1.5 million dollar investments it actually meant that in that particular year you have a direct managing an asset or investment asset of a total net value of 1.5 million dollars that there's a big differences because sometimes uh, you the, the key here for the law is to prove that you had investment profile and experiences not that you only prove you have invested once of a value of 1.5 million dollars because you can you can have a money and invest the money but you can you might not have the experiences or the right profile you see what I mean so that is the key point here now that's the reason why I wanted to make this video to actually do this explanation because a lot of people get um, mis misunderstanding how the law actually meant so another thing is I, I like to always take people to the legend com which is the um, the, the the library or a, a dictionary for Australian migration law so I actually open it up these two links it goes into detail of the law because web page sometimes do provide a different meaning or it, it 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 did not meant to have that meaning there but as a reader you might read it wrong you the perspective or the aspect that you have read it or from whatever your industry that you're in you may not understand it properly of what the exact law that's why a lot of law a lot of law degree or background people are here to do the interpretation so the interpretation has to be right in order to meet the actual meaning of the law again uh, the key here for one double a b visa investor stream is to find out a good investment profile person applicant not someone who has merely once invested of a net value of 1.5 million dollars so you see the differences here and that's the key here now because they all, all obviously Australian government wants the investor to come to Australia uh, to have a successful investment profile and experience and future as well they don't want people to come to Australia and fail and that's another key so what we have just read on the home uh, on the home affairs um, web page actually directly reflect to this uh, item 188.244 uh, regulations now this is actual regulations within the immigration law so what it meant and I'm, I'm just gonna help you out to read all this so I'm just the uh, let me adjust the um, the pages so you get, it's more in the in the middle now okay okay now for at least one of the five fiscal year meeting before the time the invitation apply for this visa obviously that we have explained that already uh, okay a or B okay you you need to meet at least one so a or b or you can meet both okay you can be a small business owner and you're also investing a lot of things or in other uh, you know um bond stocks uh real real estate property and things like that so uh, as long as you meet one you meet the you you meet this criteria so now a says both the following means they have two things that you need to be met so the first one is applicant maintain direct involvement in managing qualified business so that means basically you, you are managing your own business you have a, you have lawful operating business and you're actually managing you are the boss you are the director of the business or you might not be the director but you are in a senior managerial role you can be a CEO CFO or whatever it is as long as it's a senior managerial role showing that you have direct involvement there now secondly is that you or your partner or you and your partner together uh, had ownership interest of at least that means the shareholding percentage of at least 10 percent of the total value of the business so that to in order to actually show that it's quite easy basically you 
you you bring out your uh, company profile from your accountant it will show how much of the share you actually hold for that particular company or business in there so that's the first thing that's pretty easy to be proven as long as you are a business, small business owner but if you are not a small business owner you are a professional out there and you have been uh, devoted in your skill and expertise uh, for long term and, and the extra earning that you have made you have put it into a direct eligible investments and you have been doing that for three five ten years then you'll be able to actually meet this part okay now how do we meet this part basically well, let, let me read it out so both of following again so one and two you have to meet both so first one is the applicant maintain direct involvement in managing eligible investments of the applicant the applicants spouse or applicant and the applicant's spouse so basically you or your partner or you and your partner together so the key here in reading this part is maintained direct involvement in managing okay so that means these uh investments products or services that you have already put it in you have a direct control okay and you make the decision or you can make the decision to either uh, you know sell it or buy it for example uh, if you have directly uh, checking out and do your research on particular stocks uh, obviously now that you can you can do that on your mobile phone as long as you have the right account uh, you can actually directly involve in maintain and managing and buy you, you want to sell a particular number of stock and buy a particular number of stock that is what we call direct involvement in management okay managing those investments so again bond you can manage them because it's under you although sometimes bond or term deposit you can it, it, it has a term in there but you do have a direct control to terminate your bond or terminate uh, your um, uh the the term deposit provided you pay for whatever the penalty fees that the bank or the whatever the institution will actually charge you so you have that direct control there now a lot of things you do not have direct control so under the policy it does say that so for example superannuation and some of the in, in insurance life insurance they may take part of your life insurance to put into some investment now those part you do not have direct control because in order for you to do that you need to cancel your insurance but you cannot cancel the particular investment of that insurer's um, selected product or financial product okay that you, you see what I mean so as superannuations although nowadays superannuation does uh, some of them does give you some options but you do not have direct control to go into the depth of the options and alter and do a lot of customization you see what i mean basically the super energy company will actually take the fund and do uh, whatever, whatever the choice that you you made and then they do their own picking so whatever they wanted to invest in you do not have a direct control on picking up the items the actual investment items so that's the main part you need to show that you have maintained you have the direct involvement in managing those things so obviously it's easier to to show with real estate uh, investments as long as because generally under your own name okay and also it's easy to uh, to 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 show if it's going to be gold s silver bullions or your own business it's very easy to show now one key thing here in order to be an eligible investments okay here go that's the key word here it, ha it cannot be your residential property although you have direct control but you actually live in it, it's it's it does not deem to be counted as an investment because you actually living in there so it cannot be counted but if you do pr purchase a, a, a real estate property and you rent it out uh, that's not for your own living uh, that can be counted now again another thing is you may purchase a real estate property which can be a land or a, a, par, a pass, partial of a land and you're waiting for time to actually let it grow for capital um, appreciation then that can be counted as well now second part is the total net value has of the eligible investment has to be uh, at least 1.5 million dollars Australian dollars now key here is the net value so if you do have any liability on these assets or investments for example is the real estate property and you do have a loan or mortgage attached to it you have to deduct it out we can only count it as a net value here now 
I want to take you to more depth into this. Now, this is actual policies of explanation of eligible investments. So let me read that out. So again, the whole section here uh, does spells out uh, the key functionality of this law is identifying the applicant who has the right uh, investment profile and career, not somebody who merely got the money and had invested more than 1.5 million dollars only once in their lifetime that that cannot be counted they are looking for someone who has a long-term uh, experiences with investment profile so in order to be long-term you have to be at least three years of experience in direct involvement managing one or more qualifying business or eligible uh, investment and your asset has to be you and your partner together has to be uh, over 2.25 million dollars so uh, your asset and eligible investment are two different things uh, Eligible investment can be part of your own assets. Now, your own asset will include your own living, um, uh, staying uh, real estate property, so your own house or apartments. But eligible investment cannot count your own uh, property in there. Okay. So again, uh, it says the one double eight point two four four require applicants to have maintained involvement managing. Uh, eligible investments uh, and that has to be at least one year of the five physical year it be immediate before uh, in the invitation it has to be a net value of at least investment 1.5 million dollars okay so ownership here again it's basically pretty easy to show the the, the the ownership and the purpose of investment is what I have just spelled out so it has to provide the uh, the asset owned for the purpose of generating return by ways of income through capital appreciation. Now the return is not limited by to is not limited to so it can be interest so it can be a term deposit or money put in the bank it has interest you, you you earning that you can earn royalties dividends through business a rental from you know uh, real estate properties as well as capital appreciation so it can be a pass over land uh, or a, a huge acreage that you had purchased two or three years ago you're sitting on that you have direct and managing that part of land because uh, you can sell it straight away or you can keep it okay and and you you you're maintaining it because there's a lot of rates and taxes you need to pay for it a lot of maintenance required to be done for an acreage as well uh, and the follows of asset held per personal use so personal use cannot be counted again net value uh, has been explained here as well so it, Today's video basically take you into that one double eight point two four four, which uh, a lot of um, uh, readers or interest uh, people uh, online have been searching and they read it. They just don't understand quite understand what it actually meant. So in today's video, I think it would be really helpful for you to actually actually know what the law actually meant and what actually law requires uh, for you to actually meet that criteria. Anyway, if you do have further question or comment. Uh, you know help yourself leave a comment below i'll uh, more than happy to respond back in a timely manner and finally i would like to uh, i'd like you to consider subscribe to my video on a youtube channel and obviously the little bell on the side if you can take it so once we have uh, more updated news on the australian visa insights you'll be the first one of getting those information out thank you for watching i see you in the next video goodbye